Hey everybody, um, sorry I went, I'm a little bit late today, um, I was just sort of hanging out and waiting and then I, and then I was like, oh no, it's, it's late, I'm late, so, uh, I had a lot of people yesterday, um, asking me, and this has kind of been coming up in conversations, hello, um, I've had people asking, how do you stay inspired when, when you're feeling worried and anxious and you're not sure about things, like how, how do you get inspiration? How do you um, cut through all the noise? How do you find things that make you want to keep creating? Well, I would first of all say that it's a practice. It's like meditation. It's like going to the gym. It's like anything. Um, The first step is just to do something. And I would say lower your expectations of yourself, first of all. Like, don't don't expect to go out and create a masterpiece. Don't expect to go out and have all this crazy inspiration. Just do something simple that you wouldn't normally do that helps you see the world in a different way. So... Here's a great example. Um, I, a couple, I like to collect art books and coffee table books. And um, so I have a couple of the ones that I've been looking at recently. Um, And I'll just kind of go through and they look, they don't even have to be if you're looking for inspiration, they don't even have to be anything you're doing. I don't do people. I, I'm, um, it's kind of the one place where I draw the line is I don't um, do portraiture. But I love Mary White. She's, and I don't do watercolor, really. And she's this wonderful watercolorist. Um, but I still, I look at her work and... She has these incredible shadows and she does these things with skin colors and you kind of, you can, yeah, I don't do people. It's, it's a, there's, there's a certain expectation with them that just, someday I might do them. But right now it's, it's a, like I love, she does this beautiful she does some beautiful things with color that are just really, really different. And so I get inspiration from that and I'll look at that and it helps you think of things in different ways. Like this is a beautiful composition and, um, you, it's not a typical composition. Like the thing that's casting the shadows, you can't even really see, but it creates this wonderful pattern over this man. And it's just, it's a really, it's really good to look at things differently. Look at artists doing different mediums. Look at how they compose images. Look at how they um, do different things. Don't copy them, but it's, we have so much at our fingertips now that was not available 50 years ago that was not available a hundred years ago. Um, if you wanted to see art in the past, you actually had to go somewhere and see it in person. And we have all these books available at our disposal. Here's another, here's another artist that is, you know, totally different from what I do, but I, this is Diebenkorn and Matisse. And Devon Korn was a mid-century artist in California. And it's, I like, I like looking at things like this because you see, like, unexpected colors that I wouldn't necessarily think to put together. And he does, um, he, and then he creates pattern and texture in ways that I don't normally And so I look at him and then I look at Matisse and I look at how Matisse takes in 
you know, he adds pattern and texture and color to a scene and it becomes like this really rich layered thing. So, um, you know, they, these are just different ways to find inspiration. Uh, now we have these amazing computers at our fingertips. Our phones are so powerful. Um, we can literally look up anything. So you can, you can just look up past artists and get inspirations. You can say, oh, I'm interested in Italy. So you can Google Italy. Um, I mean, there's, there's a million different ways to get inspired. I like taking a walk around the neighborhood. And sometimes I take my sketchbook with me. A lot of times I just take my phone and I'll just see things and kind of compose reference photos on my phone. And so like, this is a book. This is actually a really cool book. Um, it's the design library and it's just different pattern design. And um, it's fascinating. Sorry, I got fingering the camera. Um, because it's colors I don't necessarily use and combinations I don't necessarily use. And uh, it sometimes when you feel like you're on a rut and you're doing the same thing, it um, is a really great way to give you a fresh perspective. So, you know, go to... Oh, uh, the Guggenheim released 200 art books online. That's fabulous. Um, yeah, get online and go look at stuff. Get outside, go for a walk around your neighborhood, look at some flowers, smell the roses at a socially acceptable distance away from everybody. And, you know, really just get out of your... If you're feeling stuck, do something different. That's the best advice that I can give, is try something different, do something different, look at something different, um, and just do something, anything. Like, it can be, like, here's Monet. And it, you know, you can just get out a paintbrush and just make marks on a page and experiment with marks. If you do that every morning for 10 minutes, you'll find you're bored at some point. At some point, you'll find you're really, really bored. And if you just keep on doing it and sort of break past that, all of a sudden you'll evolve. And you'll see you're making different marks or you've learned how to make the marks so it's almost muscle memory. And so you'll get more comfortable with it. And right at the point where you're kind of like, ugh, again, all of a sudden you'll realize that you hit this new level. And then it'll be fun again. But, I mean, look at... Look at Matisse. This is his, uh, this is kind of a retrospective of a lot of his work. And he painted this, this is just his water lilies. He painted the same thing over and over and over and over again. I mean, look, look at this. He painted, this is almost the exact same composition, the exact same scene. The lighting's just different. So, there are, I mean, you can, you can paint a lemon on a piece of paper over and over and over again over 365 days. I mean, people, people have done it. Um, so you don't have to be especially inspired by anything specific. You can just paint common things in your house, and that's your life, and that's wonderful. Um, the truest thing is that that you know. And somehow I just lost all my paper to paint on. Hmm. That's brilliant. Yep, here it is. Sorry guys, lost the lost the paper to paint on. <clears throat> got stuck in between some books. All right, so today I thought we'd do a palm tree, but kind of do a palm tree in a little bit different way as we're talking about looking at things from a different perspective. Um, I was kind of going through, speaking of looking for inspiration, I myself was a little bit stuck today, and so I was just going through some travel photos from some of our... This, some of the really cool stuff that we've done in the past. And I came upon a palm tree that was sort of a different view. I'll show you guys in a second. 
And I thought that might be an interesting composition to tackle and try. So we'll do that. Once again, I'm laying in the ground. Like I said, this is burnt sienna is one of the easiest ones for me to see. Um, so thank you guys again for joining me. I hope you guys are all surviving the quarantine. Uh, we're settling into a bit of a routine and the new normal. So let's see. Uh, the picture disappeared. Where'd it go? Everything is disappearing today. That's brilliant. All right. So this is the reference photo that I was going to use today. So it's kind of down looking up at a palm tree with a whole bunch of coconuts. Um, looking at the date, it, I think it was, we were in Sri Lanka, um, I believe at the time, which is just a beautiful, incredible country. Once this all settles down, I hope to be able to go back there. That's, uh, we've been twice and both times it was just an otherworldly experience. It's where I got to see elephants in the wild, wild elephant herds. One of the coolest parts of that exper experience is um, the time that we went, there were several baby elephants. And so we got to watch a mother and father lead a baby elephant across a stream. And we we're kind of like, the stream was much deeper than the elephant. And we were worried the baby elephant was gonna drown and we, we didn't know what the elephants do. And basically it was so cool to watch how intelligent these creatures are. Basically what they do is they, um, they mom and dad get together and they kind of smush the baby between them and the, the stream or river or whatever it was, was a little bit high, but they, uh, they, so they smush the baby between them and, uh, so that the baby can't get swept away. And then the baby, we were like, I mean, the, the water was definitely deeper than the baby was tall. And so we did not know how this baby was going to get across. And then we look and his trunk is sticking out of the water. So he had a periscope. I was, and I just thought that was totally wild. Um, and you really, you really truly do see how intelligent the creatures are. All right, so, sorry, without further ado, we are going to be doing a little bit different palm tree. So I am mixing indigo and, oh no, Prussian blue, sorry, Prussian blue and chromium green oxide and Van Dyke brown. And so what we're doing is these leaves in the back are all mostly darks. So we're kind of just massing in the dark values and then we'll come in and we'll poke some sky holes in. But we want to keep a lot of the dark values in. Okay. So as you're looking at the tree this is kind of the values that you see. See, we're looking for the darkest darks and we're kind of just putting the darkest darks in. 
I don't know that I'm gonna put that other tree behind it, like this, this bit. I think I'm probably gonna poke some sky in there to give it a little bit more breathing room. Um, and that's where you get to use artistic license because you're the artist. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to the couple, to the people that have um, contributed and did decided to do drop-in classes tonight. Um, that is, that really helps and um, makes me keep going. And so <clears throat> I'm having a lot of fun with this and like really enjoying this and really enjoying this community during this time. And um, those of you that would like to contribute, I have a link on my profile and um, you're more than welcome to paint along. If you want reference photos, I have an option for doing reference photos. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then I'm gonna, since I'm kind of doing the Prussian blue anyways, I'm gonna continue with that. So you see how this is all dark and I really just have to bring in a little suggestion. You don't even have to, you don't have to spell out what's going on. The mind will fill in a lot of the blanks. And so the mind is actually happier if you don't tell it everything it likes to have things left up to suggestion and your piece, your painting will be a whole lot more interesting if you don't spell out every single leaf or every single frond. So eventually there's this very light palm frond that kind of comes in front and there are some lighter palm fronds that come in front. So right now we're just kind of generally doing the background. And this is just the base that everything will be on top of. Um, so that's what we're doing. And so we have some mid-tones, and so I'm gonna work on the mid-tones a bit, just for, we're gonna bring in some fun, funky colors, cause we can. Um, let's see. I'm gonna bring in, I kinda make this khaki color of, it's a wonderful neutral green, and we make it from chromium oxide green and orange. And it's not a brown, but it's a very, very neutral green. And it's a super pretty color. And like I've said before, it's you don't, you wanna leave things up to suggestion and you don't wanna show the viewer everything and um, you also don't want to use, by, by showing them everything, I mean, you, do, you also don't want to use color straight out of the tube because, I mean, there, there are times and places, and if that's in your design, that's fine. But generally speaking, it um, is too vivid and it's not going to be the right value for what you need. Every now and then, yes, that's correct. That's what you need, but... Um, nine times out of ten you want to mix it one way or another <clears throat> like here i'm just even adding a little bit of orange or a little bit of um, green to go back and forth between if i want it to be a cool or if i want it to be a warm 
color. And my brush strokes aren't perfect and that's okay. Um, so a couple things like this guy. And as you work through it, you just keep going in and you work dark to light. And so you will bring in lighter and lighter colors. I'm going to bring in some turquoise for fun. So anything that you have that's cool, <clears throat> generally fades to the back. Um, so if you're, you want your warmest colors, your hottest colors, they will come forward. Like your eye sees red, yellow, orange before it will see blue. And your eye will perceive blue as being farther away, oftentimes. That's a lot of thanks to our evolution and um, formerly being hunter-gatherers on the plains and things like that. So, just look at what you can see already just from the little bits of suggestion. Um, next, I'm going to come in so that I can see the values a little bit better between um, the palm tree in the background. I'm going to come in and paint the sky in. And I'm going to do the sky. Hmm. I don't know. Y'all have any? Y'all have any input on what color you want the sky to be? Um. Anyone? Um, let's see. Let's do something crazy. Let's try like a salmon colored sky. Just for fun. All right, so I can get a really good salmon with magenta and orange. Yes, I'm gonna do it pink. Gonna paint it pink. I can get a really pretty salmon color with magenta and orange, and then I add just a touch of yellow to get it that much more, uh, to get it that much warmer. The magenta tends to be cool. It can be very, uh, almost goes purple. So if you want a hot, uh, if you want the sky to be salmon or coral rather than like a raspberry, you have to kind of go back in. So this is where you can go back in and you don't have to, you can make the sky and do some of this and put some sky holes in and it suggests the sky without you having to go in and repaint everything. So that suggests what you're doing without having to repaint it. And there are lots of like, once you get into uh, advanced landscape painting, and if you're doing this super realistically, there are things about sky holes, like they're they're darker because you're seeing through the leaves and all kinds of fun advanced stuff that 
for what we're doing today. You don't have to worry about. We're just, I mean, come on, guys. The sky's pink. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us if you're just getting here. We are painting a pink sky um, into a turquoise palm tree. Because it's Friday night and we're gonna have fun. Don't go away. If my, so the artistic license that I used, there was another palm tree right here and it kind of totally, all the leaves filled in. And although it was pretty and I kind of liked it, it made the image too heavy and you didn't, you need a little bit of balance. Otherwise it's just leaves and it was a little bit too abstract for what we're trying to do. So if I were painting this for real, I would go in and fill this in just a little bit more and um, be a little bit more exact. But honestly, for what we're doing, I think this is pretty fun. And so now I'm gonna come in. Now I can really see what needs to be lighter, what's too dark and what needs to change, like where I need to bring in some more values and what I need to kick up a little bit. Um, like there's, all right, sorry about that. And um, I need to add, I need to do something. What, I'm trying to figure out what color I wanna do, the coconuts. Don't really, I like that orange color, but I think usually if you do turquoise and, and pink, if you add yellow, it gets pretty bubble gummy. Um, so I'm trying to keep it from getting too like crazy bubble gummy. But right now I just, so I'm mixing kind of a very light sort of sage. And I'm gonna go in and really hit so there is this. Honestly, I think this pink is a little electric. So I'm gonna knock it back a little bit. It turned out it's a little Pepto-Bismol for me. So I'm gonna go in and kind of work on it and lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's closer to what I wanted. And so the one, the one thing about acrylics versus oils is that acrylics dry slightly differently. And I have especially noticed even with some pigments, some pigments, you'll put it down and you really have to sort of let it sit and see what it does to really see it, um, especially with some of the pinks. Some of the pinks dry almost purpley 
and um, you don't really realize it until they've started to dry and you thought they were one color and they're in fact quite a different situation. And so you don't have to be perfect. You're just, the point is to suggest Like I said, you don't wanna, you don't wanna treat your viewer like they're dumb and like they can't complete a thought on their own. You wanna suggest the end of a sentence and let them finish the sentence for you. Yeah, that's better. And I'm coming in with the turquoise. I think what color I wanted to coconuts. I kind of want to do them a green color. Probably should have done a magenta. That's all right. That's an experiment for another day. Let's see how those look. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne. So good to see you. I don't. I don't know. Um, I haven't. I keep forgetting to rip up the other ones from the other days. Um, just been getting busy. My daughter and I are settling into a routine. We both miss Daddy. He's he's under staying at home orders in New Orleans. Um, he's not sick. It's just everyone in New Orleans is ordered to stay at home. So, or stay in place or whatever it is. Um, so he is there and we are here and we are holding it down and just continuing on. So let's see how this looks. Yeah. Sometimes I just go in and sort of experiment with some colors and see how I like them. Sometimes I really like them, sometimes they're awful. And that's okay during this whole process. Like like I said, it's this is we're just trying new things. Seen what we like. I feel like I need Go 
coconuts are a little bit awkward, but that's all right. I'll let it ride. So yeah, this is kind of the, it's kind of my 20 minute palm tree. Um, this was a great color study. It kind of gives me some ideas. I'm really, I hadn't used much Prussian blue in my, uh, I hadn't used much, much Prussian blue in what I was doing for a long time. I had used a lot of it and I've been using more indigo. And so I'm, I'm really liking the Prussian blue and the greens. Um, I need to think about the highlights. I want something, it's not quite enough and I'm not sure I need something that pops. And this is where like you work through the problems and I don't 100% know the solution. So this is where you just kind of start. If I'm using the same color palettes I always use, then yes, I know the solution, but we're exploring new things. So I don't always know the way out of this and y'all are literally watching me fall on my face on live Instagram. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> um, not fun, but you know, explore, try things, fail, try again. And I've, I've said it before and I'll, I'll keep beating the drum, but it's really important to your personal growth as an artist is to, um, like I saw, I saw this one artist who does these beautiful neutral florals and oops, see, I just sent a paintbrush across the room. Um, who does these beautiful neutral florals? And she was trying some like very vivid um, cotton candy colors, and she just was not feeling it. And um, that's okay, but it was also a really good exercise for her to try it. And, and master some of these things that she's not comfortable with. And so that's why I'll do some things I'm not comfortable with. Like that's why I did the lemons and I worked with yellow, even though I'm not very comfortable with that color. And I'll work with neutrals when I'm not always comfortable with neutrals, um, just so that I can, um, you know, get so that I can master a skill and it takes failing in order to master it, honestly. And then, you know, you can pull it out of your hat when you need to, but you don't always have to have it. I need a little more contrast. There we go. We needed some. This is getting too. This is getting too blah, and we needed to kick this up a little bit. Sometimes you don't see what it's doing until, like I said, until the colors set a little bit. And you'll notice some, depending on the pigment, some of them really fade into the background and others are super opaque. Some will, they're all a little bit different. It, it, it really helps to learn, the color, learn what your colors do and how they interact and just get in there and make mistakes and make a mess and that's how you get better. thing about this one that I'm struggling with is there's um it needs some really light values and some like super light values it's a little flat So you just go back and you work and you try and you, you push and pull. 
it's a constant push and pull and um Ah, so Alexandra Matthias, you can, this will be replayed for the next 24 hours. Um, so you can watch the beginning if you want. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just, like I said, it's a, a big, giant experiment of trying. And once you do get to know certain things, I know certain colors and I know certain colors that work together. And I've, I have color palettes that are easy to fall back on. But the point of this is to try new things and to really push myself as an artist. And so that's why we tried a pink sky. Um, and that's why we tried some colors I'm not as familiar working with. And um, I definitely learned a lot about this. So thank you guys so much. I hope you're having a great Friday. Um, I'm going to be doing this every weeknight until we are quarantined um, or until we're all let out of quarantine and if you're enjoying this uh, the link on my Instagram bio has a way that you can contribute a little bit um, the Instagram lives will be free but if you want reference photos I will I'm offering an option where I can email you the reference photos so you can paint along with me um, as well as a material list and sort of a uh, overall course about like how to use acrylics if, if you're a brand new acrylic person so if you have any questions feel free to dm me um this was a lot of fun and i look forward to seeing you guys on monday night at 8 30. thanks so much